Oh, hello, sweet peeps. How are you guys doing today? Hello, sweet peeps. How are you guys doing today? <laughs> oh, <I> love. <laughs> Hello, sweet peeps. How are you guys doing today? Hello, Daddy. How are you doing? I'm doing wonderful. Thank you for having me again. I know it's been a minute since we've been here. And we are excited to come back and join all these people out here. How are you doing, Sa? Oh, I'm doing great. And uh, good to see you again. And uh, record one more video, yes? Today. We are sleeping in this picture, no? <laughs> Yes. Actually, I'm always sleeping on, on pictures. That was at the at the botanical somewhere over there in um where was that? Curitiba. Curitiba, that's it. Curitiba. Yes. The botanical. It was beautiful there. I yes, like it's it. beautiful. Botanical, yes, I remember even the name. <laughs> you yeah. have a good memory. <laughs> Wonderful. That's where I danced with you for the first time. Yes, yes, it was first time in Brazil, no? Yes, first time. 2022. Your first time in Brazil. Yes, 2022. In the beginning of 2022, right? Yeah. Uh, it was in August. Oh, yes, it was birthday. Time, Your birthday month. Oh, yes, my birthday month. Yes. <laughs> it was a good time. Good time together. Wonderful. Yes. Most common advanced medical vocabulary? Oh, no. Yes. Oh, no. So now you start this one that is smaller than the previous one. Then you learn the most common advanced vocabulary that you need because we all need to know medical vocabulary. So let's get started with this section right now. Yes, Daddy. Okay, let's do it. Okay. A little nervous. Don't know what's coming. No, it's okay. Let's go, go ahead. ahead and and see. Yes, even uh, I needed to take a look and search. Yes. <laughs> okay. Yes. So let's start with that part. So a patient is a person receiving medical care. We will all be patient at some point of, of, in our lives. So I'm sure all of us have already been patient on numerous occasions. Now, right now, I'm not a patient, even though I have a doctor, I'm not a patient because currently I'm not receiving medical care. This only applies when you're in the process of receiving medical care. There are two types of patients. First, you can be, yes, you can say mention something. I was gonna say patient as in like medical patient, but you also have, you gotta be patient um, or to get your cookies. <laughs> so you gotta have patience, but that's yeah. different than a patient or a doctor, like you're inpatient and impatient. Don't be impatient, but then, then you got an inpatient. That is someone that's staying in their uh, hospital, yes? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Yes, great, Daddy. Yes, you can be an inpatient, which means you're admitted to the hospital to receive care. If you're an inpatient, you're going to the hospital, at the hospital for a night, a week, or even longer. You have a hospital room and a hospital uh, bed. M many inpatients are in an area of the hospital called the ICU. So, ICU. This is, do you want to, to mention something about inpatients then? Um, no, no. I yeah. um, Other than, you know, like I was saying, there's two ways of saying it, but I think it's spelled different. But you, so some people can get confused by saying, don't be impatient, uh, wait your turn, or inpatient. I think M, inpatient is I am, I don't know. 
but yep. yeah, you get confused. But yeah, the, a lot of places you would stay in a hospital. It's not just the ICU because that's the intensive care unit. Um, but you just have your rooms. You have your rooms where you're going to have a baby and all that stuff. So pretty nice. Some of those uh, hospitals have got pretty nice rooms. So. Uh-huh. Yeah. I see you. Yes, I see you. This <laughs> is the intensive care yes, unit, the ICU. And this is where inpatient go to receive a high level of care. Yes. Mm -hmm. And next, mm -hmm. you can also be an outpatient, which most of us usually are, which means you receive care without being admitted to the hospital. You are an outpatient when you go to the ER, which is the emergency room. You're there to receive care for a specific treatment or illness. They treat you and then you leave. You don't stay overnight at the hospital. Yes, Eddie? Yeah. information? No, that's, uh, I think, about it. Yeah, just getting your checkup and uh, getting whatever you need fixed, fixed. And then they give you your medicine and you go home and you um, finish out your treatment. Yes. And go ahead. Could you read it, that one? All right. Medical professionals, doctor and physician. MD, medical doctor. A lot of times the names uh, come up with MD or MD Johnson. Medical doctor Johnson. Um, so you got doctor and physician. They are different, though. Yes. And then you got OS as general practitioner. They treat a wide range of health issues. Is that what you got? Go ahead. Don't know the difference between these, but I know there is a difference. So if you know, go ahead. Yes. Okay, and uh, let's talk about about common medical professionals. You need to yes. know. But uh, uh, <laughs> yes, let, I start again. Like common medical professionals, you need to know. Of course, you already know the doctors also known as a physician in North America is more common to simply say doctor, but it means the same thing. Most of us have a GP, which stands for a general practitioner. This is a doctor who treats a wide range of issues. So you can go to your GP because you have a pain in your back, or because you have a cold or a throat infection or an eye issue, a wild range of issues. You can go to your GP. But what about you, Daddy? Do you have something to mention? Yes, this would be your doctor that you go to. That's what it would, GP would be. Um, you wouldn't call him your GP. Uh, but yeah, maybe someone would say that you need to go to your your primary physician is what we'd probably call them your primary physician the one that always treats you that knows you uh, i don't have one i have never really had one um i'm one of the guys that just don't like going to the doctors very often probably not great but if you don't think you're sick you're not sick right so i just don't think i'm sick <laughs> but yeah um yeah that would be considered your your general practitioner as your doctor that is assigned to you Go ahead. Yes, yeah, interesting. Yes. Would you like to read that one? That one. So we'll go down to surgeon. He is the the main um, person that does the surgeries there. Uh, he, but there's a wide range of surgeons. You got your brain surgeon, surgeon. You got your heart surgeon. You got your even your you got hand surgeon for your feet, your knees. I mean, everything's different. So each doctor is specialized in those sections of treatment. So there would be different kinds of surgeons, like your specialist underneath specializes in certain specific areas. Go ahead, Saul. Yes, yes. So 
uh, yes, there are a lot of specialists, no? Yes. yes. Would you like to say something else? I, I'm all right. I got this. I think I covered the surgeon and your specialist because I, both of them I put together. So yeah, your surgeon is specialized in certain areas. I mean, you even got ones that are for just your mouth or your eyes or your nose or your ears. Each one is their own. And did you know when you go to the hospital, each thing that you get done to you is a different entity of that hospital. You have the ones that do the, the anesthesia. You have the ones that do your x-rays. You have, and each one of those is their own entity. Even the, the ambulance driver, they're not part of the hospital. They are subtracts, subcontracted out and they own their own business. So they're yeah. all different entities of their own. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't know that for the longest time, but now I do. Uh -huh. yeah. Yes, yes, you already uh, told you in advance a lot. And it's interesting that you see. And uh, you had something else, huh? I guess. Yes, you did. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. <laughs> and and uh, it's great. And uh, it's great. So a surgeon, yes, is a doctor who performs surgery, of course. So there are also uh, many, yes. especially this is a doctor who focuses on one specific medical area. Yeah, you already told <laughs> so, you. Yeah, the heart, yeah. Dermatologist, yeah, see, there's a lot. Pediatrician. There's a lot more than that, though. Yes. So, yeah, you're a specialist. You got a grip of them. Go ahead. Yes, yes. A cardiologist. Focus on your heart. Yes. A dermatologist focuses on your skin. Skin, yeah. <laughs> and the next, a pediatrician focus on children and in North America, who never go to a pediatrician at the end of, the, they always give to your sucker because kids are always scared of going to the pediatricians who is a doctor for children. So treat you as uh, with a sucker or a small treat after. Yes. I still like my small treat after I go to the doctors. Yes. The sticker. A sucker. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> That's a good idea. Huh? Everyone likes suckers. Everyone likes suckers. Yes, I like suckers. Yeah. Lollipop. Lollipop. Your pediatrician. <laughs> pediatrician. Yes, pediatrician. I'm trying to say until now, pediatrician. <laughs> I'm Sorry. The, oh, there, there are a lot more, no? See? You should have started with that one. Yes. I start again, though. Yes, you could read it all again. Well, you got your cardiologist. You say mm -hmm. heart. Your dermatologist is for the skin. The pediatrician for the children. Optom optometrist. Some of these are really hard to say. Optometrist. Eyes. Optometrist. Your oral. Cavities. Hair teeth, um, your OBGYN that's for women, and I don't know any guy that would want to study for that, but they probably regretted it afterwards. <laughs> oh, uh <-huh. laughs> they thought it was going to be a wonderful thing. Um, uh, your anesthesiologist, yep, they are the ones that put you to sleep when you are um, getting ready to go to surgery which that's the anesthesia and monitors and your radiologist. Yeah. Your x-rays, your psychiatrist. That's for the mental breakdowns and go crazy. Um, and ears, no throat doctor. That's what you just, we don't even say EMT. Yeah. Ears, no throat doctor. And then you forgot EMT, your ambulance drivers. They are EMTs. Uh -huh. So go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. So I'll see what you got. So optometrist focuses in your eyes. If you wear glasses like me, you 
often go to the optometrist. And the dentist, of course, focuses on oral health, as I have here, something to use in my teeth, yes. OBGYN. I have no idea what is what this stands for. I know it's a very long word, but OBGYN. It's a doctor, uh, specifically for women when you're pregnant or to discuss reproductive issues. And anesthesia anesthesiologist, anesthesiologist, uh, don't uh, let this spelling confusing to you. Native speakers have a difficulty with the pronunciation as you had said, no? <laughs> anesthesiologist, yes, anesthesiologist. Could you say that? Anesthesiologist. Yes, and anesthesiologist administers anesthesia, which is what makes you go unconscious because uh, before surgery, they also monitor you during surgery. A radiologist does the x-rays, CT scans, and MRIs. <laughs> a psychiatrist I needed to, a psychiatrist focuses in their mind and mental disorders and e n t it stands for ears, nose, and throat, so that top doctor and e n t focuses on those three things ear, nose, and throat. There are more specialists, but these are the most common. So I got what OBGYN is, and it's only two words. It's obstetrician. So the OB is obstetrician. And the GYN is gynecologist. OBGYN. So it's just two words, obstetrician and ob, um, gyneco I can't even say it now, gynecologist, gynecologist, see? Yeah. Uh -huh. Can you see okay. it? That's yes, how you spell it? Now I see. Yes. I can see, yes. So not so bad, actually, we probably have heard those words before, but. It's easier to say OB and GYN, a lot easier. <laughs> yes, yes, so many hard words, to, big words to pronounce. No? Oh yes, just like their medication. <laughs> and the prices to pay for them. Yes, yes. <laughs> yes, so what do, do, would you like to say to people with this, this picture here? so we would like to subscribe yes so you guys if you guys are enjoying our um little session of our classes please like and subscribe share with your friends and um hope to uh see more of you all out there and thank you what do you got to say so yes yes uh don't don't forget to subscribe hit like and share our channel. Would you like to to start in that one? The uh, medical professionals. Um, okay, this one is nurse, and most people think when you say nurse, it is a woman, which we all do, but it could be a man also. And go ahead, so I'll tell them what they do. Yes, yes, for sure men or women yes so of course nurses are just as important as doctors you can be a registered nurse and i am this means you have a nursing degree and you have a license in the specific area where you 
are unders. You know what they do. Uh, tell me. They're the ones that take care of you before the doctor comes in. Uh, they also, um, they do the IVs. They do the monitoring of the heart. Um, if you need anything, that's who you talk to is the nurse. The nurse is the, the one that takes care of you. No. Um, the doctor only comes in for a minute and then leaves. But yet he gets the most money. So always be kind to your nurse. Because they're the ones that are taking care of you. Uh -huh. Yeah. So go ahead. Yes. Always wear clean underwear. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so you can be as a registered nurse. Yes. It means you have a nursing degree and you have a license in the specific area where you are a nurse. You can also be a nurse practitioner and NP. Would you like to say about that, Sandy? I don't know the difference really. Um, I don't. I didn't even know there was a different nurses. I figured probably more than likely there would be, but shoot, I'm surprised there's not another one. But um, yeah, so I don't really know the difference. Uh huh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so I'm nurse practitioner NP, uh, advanced training. Uh, you can diagnose and treat a specific me uh, medical conditions. Yeah. Mm. Let's talk about a routine checkup. This is what all of us do, hopefully, every six months or every year. And this is uh, your GP, your general practitioner, just to review your overall health. So you don't have a specific medical issue. It's just a routine appointment. We call that a checkup, a routine checkup. During that routine checkup, your GP, general practitioner, is going to examine your viral signs. Your viral signs include your temperature, your heart weight, and your blood pressure. Now, you can also discuss any specific medical issues that you're having with your GP during the routine checkup. Of course, you can schedule an appointment at a separate time for a specific medical issue. If you are discussing a specific medical concern or issue with your GP, it's possible that they will refer you to a specialist. For example, your GP could say, I'm going to refer you to an ENT. Remember that ears, nose, and throat, that's what the doctor specializes in. When you see the, the specialist or even when you're with your GP, you're going to talk about your symptoms. A symptom is any feeling of illness that you currently have or you've had in the past that you want to discuss with your GP or the specialist. And when you're talking to the doctor, one of the very first things they will say is, what are your symptoms? What are your symptoms? And then you simply tell the doctor, what's wrong? What's your feeling that isn't right? Could you read that part, Daddy? Um, yeah, it's, uh, our symptoms are, I have a lot of back pain, or my left arm is very sore, or my feet are numb, my vision is blurry, or I feel nauseous. So those are just some symptoms that you would ask your doctor or tell your doctor that you are feeling. And those are all different symptoms, of course, of something um, that could be worse or could be nothing. Yes. Yeah. Like I said, it could just because you drank too much alcohol okay, and you fell down some stairs and you got up. <laughs> now your back hurts. Your arm's a little sore. Your feet are numb because you fell down the stairs and your vision's blurry because you're hungover. 
And that's why you're also feeling nauseous. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, <laughs> all because of alcohol. All the same. Okay. You really like to talk about alcohol. No, because it was funny because we talked about it before and I'm just saying <laughs> I put it all together and it sounded like because I actually seen someone fall down the stairs before and we took him to the hospital and he was buking up red stuff, but it was a Bloody Mary that he was buking up. So it was nothing. Most people, yes. there's alcohol in this world. Yes. Most yes. people. Yes, yes. So a lot of symptoms, yes? yes, which means you can't feel your feet. If they are numb, you can't feel them. My vision is blurry, which means you can't see very well. Or you could say, I feel nauseous. Nauseous, that's the feeling you get when you're on a roller coaster. I feel nauseous. Those are just some symptoms you may be experiencing you can experience or have a symptom that are of course many many other symptoms that you could have and that you could discuss with your gp or a specialist after listening to your symptoms the doctor might want you to do some diagnostic tests. These are tests or an exam to determine the existence or the absence of a specific medical condition, disease, or illness. Could you, could you read this part again? To determine the presence of absence of a specific disease condition or medical problem and then you got your and then after those tests you do the diagnostic diagno and then you get your diagnosis which should take a couple days later and then you'll get a phone call and hopefully it's good news it's nothing at all yes um other or they say it's nothing at all but you're not feeling any better so they miss something that happens quite a bit so yeah that the di diagnosis is a judgment about what a particular illness or problem is or is not so okay yes a diag diagnosis test is uh, m r i s s x rays ct scan blood tests those are diagnostic, diagnostic tests. After those diagnostic tests, the doctor will have a diagnosis, which is a judgment about what the illness or medical problem is. Then you can discuss the treatment options. These are the different difference, of course, the action that you can take address the medical issue or the different treatments available. If the treatment option includes medication, well, then the doctor will write you a prescription. A prescription is a written order or in a modern word, uh, most likely an electronic order for a specific medical treatment, like a drug or a specific pill. You can take your prescription from a pharmacy. Could you read again this part, Adeli? Yeah, the uh, prescription, a written electronic order from a licensed professional for a specific medical treatment. And then they give you also how to take the medication, what to do, and how to get rid of it uh, or properly dispose of it when you have not used it all. But they can mess up also. We're all human. Um, yes. All but human. the one thing you want to remember, just like your nurses, take care of your the person behind the counter. Don't be rude. Talk to them 
and try to get their name. Talk to them and use their name. People like it when you use their name. Oh, yes. The doctor, they like to use their last name, so you always use their last name. But their first name with most of these uh, nurses and stuff they use. So, um, yeah, talk to them like a human. They're just human, too. They are doing their job. They're trying to do their best. Sometimes we mess up. Um, just like we all do. We're not perfect. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Uh, pharmacists, they can be, they, they're just sitting back there behind their counting million, million pills. It's got to be a boring job. But yeah, go ahead. Yes, yeah, just the pharmacist uh, at, at the pharmacy, of course, will be the a pharmacist and the pharmacist fills the prescription, which means they provide you with the medical treatment on the prescription it will tell you what the dosage is and this information in the pharmacist leads the dosage is the amount of or quantity of the medical treatment like a specific drug so how much of that drug are you getting and what is the quantity of the activity uh, drug in each pill that you get. That is the dosage the pharmacist will also talk about any side effects. So the side effects of a specific medical treatment, those are the unintended consequences. So if you take a pill, it might cause headaches but is trying to treat your sore arm, but then it causes a headache. So that's the side effect of the pill. Any unintended consequences of adverse reactions, those are the side effects. And then later you can schedule a follow-up appointment with your GP or specialists to discuss if your symptoms have they relieved at all. It, it's the, uh, of course, the, the action, the treatment is working if uh, there needs uh, any change to the dosage, a uh, different prescription. You can discuss of that with your GP or a specialist at a follow-up appointment. Would you like to say something about that, Daddy? Your follow-up appointments? Yeah, that's just to make sure you're, everything's going good. Um, a lot of times I don't go to those. I just don't have a lot of time to do some of the stuff they want you to do. Um, like when I stepped on the nail the other day, um, it was last last weekend uh they wanted me to soak my foot four times a day i couldn't do that that that, that wasn't going to happen um which might be a problem as it started hurting again today so i don't know oh wow mm -hmm. uh, and the side effects will be have to start over again they might have to cut it open if it's bad if it gets infected i'll have to start all over on my medication um, you can get sick. If you start seeing a red line going up your your leg from that, you better go to the doctor immediately. Sis sepsis, I think it's called sepsis, but it's S S S E S. I thought it was mm. but it kind of sounds like that. It's an infection that will kill you within twenty four hours, twelve to twenty four hours. Um. Yeah, that red that red line, once it gets to your heart, it spreads like wildfire and you don't usually make it from that. Or you lose oh. limbs. Yeah, it's a bad one. And if it hits your bone, that's why they did an x-ray to make sure. Um, then it's even worse. Because infection goes throughout your whole entire skeletal and outer parts of your body. So 
you got to make sure you don't get that. And I, I'm sure you guys know about that, yes? Uh, yes, yes. Septic. I don't yeah. remember what that's called. Yes, specific words in uh, medical words is not easy to pronounce. No. 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 <laughs> Even there uh, are a lot. They study for five years and much, much, much more. Like my, my, my nephew is really, Brian is really brave, you know, to study medicine, to be a doctor, because there are a lot of terms to learn, no? a lot of things to know. If they don't know, they can't. Uh, work on it you know they really need to know some people they they have a course and sometimes they don't know a lot but to be a doctor you need to know <laughs> you need to pay attention in classes or of course uh in your classes uh because there are practical classes and theoretical classes so the practical class i think it's really important to do it you get your hands on and your books I'm a hands-on kind of person. I got to do hands-on because I fall asleep when I read books. No. So I, yeah. Well, I have to read things twice or three times, sometimes over and over just to understand what they're saying. So I don't like it. Anyways, the one that I never got was you can't read their handwriting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You, yes. you ever notice that when they sign your, um, your prescription, mm. you can't read that. It is so scratchy. Yes, would you like to mention something more about that part? Uh, no. no. I don't think that's much more much of the doctor's scene. <laughs> the hell out. Yes, amazing job. So in the next class, let's get your pre prepared for your job interview. In the next section, you're going to learn all the vocabulary that you need to sound fluent, sound professional, and sound natural at, in your next job interview. So let's see that in the next class. Thank you for watching us. See you guys. Have a great time there and see you in the next class. Yes, Daddy? Yes, and thank you. Subscribe in our channel. Mm -hmm. um... But yes, please subscribe and follow us and make sure you share with all your friends. We are going to just get better at this. This, uh, what do you call this? Medical class. Just the whole thing all together. What we're doing. Advanced um, classes. Yeah, our advanced classes. Uh, like I said, I'm learning it as we go. I know some, but... I don't know all, and some of these words are bigger than what I usually use, but now I get to know what they are. Since I didn't finish that part of school, the we called it English in school. Yes, we still had to take English in school, even though we are English. <laughs> but uh -huh. yeah, it's because I guess we have to learn proper English. Anyways, thank you all, and have a wonderful night. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Yes, see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Thank you.